Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli for Mobox and this time we are going to create a skate park scene with the animation. As always, the file will be available on our Patreon page, but for everyone else, let's just get started with the tutorial. So first thing we are going to create is a quick low poly version of a skateboard. You can also use the detailed skateboard model that comes with Cinema 4D by going to your content browser and making a search for a skateboard there. But we are going to start off with a polygon object, so we just have this one polygon. Let's scale this up a bit so it is longer, like a skateboard. And we are also going to make this editable, so we can select these two edges. And now while holding Ctrl or Command and using the Scale tool, we are just going to scale it on this direction. So we get duplicates of these edges. Now we have two new polygons. And with these edges still selected, we can raise this up. So we have the base shape of a skateboard. Now select the two original edges, so at the curve. And we're going to make these smoother with the bevel tool. So you can press M and S on the keyboard. And let's start clicking and dragging to make a bevel on this. And we are going to add plenty of subdivisions to make it smoother. Something like 10 looks fine. Now let's go to the point mode, so we can select these four corner points. And we're going to use the bevel tool again. But this time we need to make sure the limit option is turned on, otherwise things will get glitchy. And now we increase the offset so the corners connect with each other. So that's great. Now we are going to add some thickness to this. So let's go to the polygon mode and select all of the polygons by pressing Ctrl or Command and A. And now we can use the extrude tool to raise it up a bit. But also make sure you check the create caps option, otherwise it is hollow at the bottom. So that's the board. Let's go ahead and add some wheels to this. This will just be a rough interpretation because it is just a low poly version anyway. And I just want a quick skateboard model for this. So let's create a cube. But before moving this, we are going to create a symmetry object so we can drag the cube inside of it. So that cube was still centered in the scene. And we are also going to group this cube, so put it in a null by pressing Alt and G while it is selected. We are doing this because this way we can add multiple objects in this null and it will all be cloned to the other side with the symmetry object. So to start this cloning to the other side, we need to move this cube of course. But you can see nothing is happening, so we need to go to the symmetry object and make sure the mirroring direction or the mirror plane is set up correctly. So let's change it from ZY to XY. It may be different in your scene, it depends on how you set up the direction of the board. So now we have these two identical clones on every side. Let's roughly position this and scale this so it looks like something that belongs right there. And now we are going to add a cylinder to this, so the part which will hold the wheels. Let's roughly scale this and place it in this null we just created. This way we have a perfect mirrored version. Now let's create a duplicate of just this cylinder. And we're going to scale this down in height, but we're going to make it larger in the radius. Let's also add a fillet on the caps, so it is a bit smoother at the edges. But let's also decrease the radius so it isn't looking like a sphere. And this will be the wheel of course. So now we would like to have this on both sides. So that means we need another symmetry object. So let's drag that in this null, with the cylinder inside of it. And for this one I think the original mirror plane is just fine. So let's try to move it to the side. Okay, so that looks fine so far. Let's make this original cube editable so we can just make this a bit more refined. We are going to select this edge and also press this button to reset the axis on this so we can move it just in a straight line to the side. Let's also do the same thing on the other side. I think that looks better now. Now a last thing we are going to add to this skateboard model are the details on the wheel. So I'm just going to keep this simple by creating yet another duplicate of this cylinder. And maybe we can remove the fillet on this and scale it down. Or actually we can also keep the fillet but just with a smaller radius. So let's move it like this. And we're going to make a final adjustment to the wheel so make sure that is editable. And we're going to select these front polygons and use the inner extrude tool to make a smaller ring inside of this. And then with these polygons still selected, just move these inwards a bit. Okay, so I think this looks fine for a simplified wheel. Let's add the final details at the top, so that are usually these four bolts at every side. These are cylinders of course, but very small. Let's stay centered for this while we are starting. And maybe we can already drag this in the null of the symmetry. 
but we need four of these so let's move it to the side already and we are going to create a cloner object where we can change the mode to grid array and we don't need any clones in the height so let's change the middle value to one and the other ones just need two so that means we have four of these let's also decrease the size of the cloner so it actually fits the skateboard I think something like 20 centimeters looks fine maybe 30 if you want to also make sure the cylinders are small enough so it isn't reaching through the bottom so let's add some colors to finish this skateboard you can see I already have a palette of colors in my material manager right here but I'm just going to show the hex colors on screen so you can just copy and paste these in your scene these are just materials with all the default options and just changing the color so for the board I'm going to use the brightest skin tone color and we're also going to make sure we have the board selected so we can go in the polygon mode and just select these top polygons and on that one we are going to drag the darkest material for the bolts we can use this gray color also at the bottom the same thing applies to this and the wheels can be white or anything you like I also think I'm going to increase the size of the cloner which holds the screws so something like 30 centimeters I think that looks better okay so that is a skateboard so we can group all of this together and call it skateboard now we are going to create the ramp so let's hide the skateboard by pressing these buttons until they go red and now let's go in the side view so the right side in this case and I'm going to use the pen tool and just create one point randomly on the screen we are also going to hit escape so we have just this one point because this way it is easier to create straight lines you can do that by using the move tool and holding ctrl and command again and just drag it down maybe you also want to hold shift while doing this so we have exact numbers so in this case let's go for 200 centimeters to the bottom now we can move it to the side while holding ctrl and shift so let's go for something like 500 centimeters and now finally we can go up 200 centimeters again so that is why I wanted some exact numbers because now the top points are leveled with each other of course this is a very unrealistic ramp shape so let's select these two bottom points and what you usually would try to do is using the bevel tool but that does nothing on this so we need to right click and go to chamfer and this way if you click and drag you can create some perfect smooth curves let's go for something like this just make sure you still have some straight lines at the top you can also select the top points and raise these up a bit more if you want to okay now let's go back to the perspective view and you can see we just have this spline so let's make an extrusion on this by creating an extrude object and dragging this spline inside of it by default it tries to extrude it on the last value so let's remove that because this doesn't look right and we're going to extrude it on the first value so that is the x-axis let's go for something like 350 centimeters or something and I think that looks okay now I'm going to make a duplicate of this ramp shape so we can have the old one as a backup so make sure that old one is hidden and press C on the new one so it is just one object I want some extra geometry at the top so we can make these extrusions to the side so that will be the part where people can stand at the top of the ramp to do this let's go to the right view again and use the knife tool with the visible only option deselected also let's do this in the edge mode and now we are going to create a cut at the top from one side to the other also make sure you hold shift while doing this so it is a straight line and now you should have something that looks like this let's go to the polygon mode and select all of these polygons and use the extrude tool again to extrude it outward I think something like 15 centimeters looks just okay proportionally now we're going to select these polygons at the sides and use the extrude tool again to extrude these outward so that way we have the base shape of the ramp let's drag a color on this for this one we can use the more saturated skin tone and let's also unhide the skateboard to see how this looks and of course the skateboard is way too big also one thing you may notice is that it is not exactly centered with the ramp that is because the ramp is not centered I think so let's select the ramp and you can see the position is still at zero on every value but it is still a bit off because the axis is not centered to the ramp so let's go to mesh axis center and select center axis 2 this way it is perfectly centered so now we can see the position values also changed so let's reset these back to zero 
Now everything is nicely centered, so we can go ahead and scale down this skateboard. I think something like this looks fine, it doesn't really matter if it isn't perfect because it is a cartoony style. So the proportions will not be very realistic anyway. Okay, so the next thing we can do is adding a floor object. You cannot see it in the scene, you can only see the axis of this. So let's go in the side view so we can just line up this axis with the bottom of this ramp. If you actually want to see a floor in your viewport, you can also add a plane object and just drag this down as well. I'm also going to scale this up. Okay, so now we're going to create some structures which will hold the ramp, because this way it doesn't look really safe to use. There are multiple ways you can do this. You could just do this with some cloners or just some random cubes you move by hand. But I found another way which I personally really enjoy using. And that is just using some sweep objects with rectangles. So create a rectangle object. And we're going to scale this down in height. You can also go to the front view so it lines up with the ramp. So something like this looks okay. Now we are going to create a second rectangle which will be perfectly square and just scale it down. Something like 15 centimeters will do again so we get the same kind of proportion as the top parts of the ramp. And now let's place both of these in a sweep object. Let's also add the color already. So this way you can see we have some kind of frame. Let's also add this in a symmetry object again so we can move it to the side and have a perfectly mirrored version at the other side again. I'm also going to copy and paste this sweep object outside of the symmetry object. And also down here at the position values I'm going to reset these to zero. So it is centered with the scene again. And now let's rotate this so it is flat and move it to the bottom. Now we can go ahead and select this bottom rectangle so that is the frame and scale this up in height. And let's just try to line this up exactly with the other parts. Also make sure it is not visible through the ramp. So move it down a bit if you need to. Okay, let's go back to this last symmetry object we created and place this sweep object inside a null again. So we can create a second one inside of it. Otherwise, if these are not inside the null, it will only duplicate the top sweep. Let's select this rectangle again, so we can scale this down on the width this time. That way we get two more beams. We can try to scale this by dividing it by two, but that doesn't look that good in my opinion, so let's just do it manually and eyeball it. Okay, now let's add one more piece. I'm going to select the sweep at the bottom of the screen and duplicate it to the null we have in this symmetry object. Let's move it up. And we can already scale down this first rectangle, so it is a bit smaller than the other ones. And of course we don't want to have this run through the middle, so let's scale this down already. And move it back to the side. Let's just eyeball this again. So like this. Now let's add the final frames at the top here, so people would not fall off if they are standing at the top. We can do that by just duplicating some of these sweep objects at the bottom. So let's get this one and raise it up. If it is difficult to select the right ones, you can also disable the symmetry object and just pick the right ones right now. I'm also going to make these a bit thinner by scaling down these two rectangles at the beginning of the sweep object. And let's also scale down the framing rectangles. Now let's select the large one of the two. And we're going to make a duplicate again and rotate this so we can have these structures at the side. But now we need a new symmetry object inside the original symmetry object again. So that's the same thing as we did with the wheels on the skateboard. An easy way to get this at the right spot in your hierarchy is just making sure the sweep object is selected and then just add the symmetry object while holding Alt or Option on the keyboard. That way the sweep will be a child of the symmetry object. So that saves a bit of time. Let's also make sure we have the correct mirror plane. So XY in this case. And finally, we need to adjust the scale of the rectangles, of course. And maybe you also like it even more if you just lower the whole frame so the bottom bar is not visible. Okay, let's close the symmetry object because that is done. We're going to select all of this without the plane and floor object so we can group this together and call it ramp. I'm also going to group together the plane and the floor so that is clean. Now in our following step, we are going to use that extrude object we had a duplicate of, so the one that is hidden. Let's go inside of it and grab this spline. We are just going to copy and paste it outside of there, so we still have the original object. 
Now this one isn't centered like the ramp again, so we need to make sure that it is centered by once again going to mesh, axis center and center axis too. Now make sure the position values are set at zero again, and that way it should line up with the ramp again. Now you can see it is inside of the ramp, so let's move it up a bit more so it is floating just above it. Also let's select the points at the top, so we can raise these up, because this spline will tell where the skateboard will go, and I want it to go in the air, so we need a bit more room at the top. Now with the spline selected as an object on its own, let's scale this down just a bit more so it is inside of the ramp, because we need to compensate for the wheels which are below the skateboard. For now let's select the skateboard, right click on it and go to Cinema 4D Tags and choose Align to Spline. Now we are going to drag the spline under the spline path field down here. And that way you should notice that the skateboard is moving up to the first point of the spline. For now it is not rotating with the spline so that isn't looking very good. But we can fix this by checking this tangential option down here. Now you can see the skateboard is rotated but it is pointing in the wrong direction. And that is happening because the spline is going straight up and the align to spline option is just guessing which direction it needs to go to. So we need to help it a bit by selecting one of these points. So let's start with this one. And we're going to move this just a bit to the side. It is just the smallest movement, you shouldn't even see it moving. But by doing that it will still fix the direction of the skateboard. So let's do the same thing on the other side. And let's go back inside of this tag by selecting it. And now down here you have this position value, which will be the main driver for the animation. So let's just see how this looks if we go through it. Okay, so the direction is correct at the other side as well. But you can still see some clipping at the corners. So we need to adjust that. Let's go to the side view and take a closer look. Just so you can already tell the skateboard is way too low to the ground. At minus maybe a bit long as well, so I'm going to make this shorter real quick. Now let's go back to the spline and adjust this so the skateboard is not inside of the ramp. Let's start off by raising the spline up so the wheels are exactly hitting the ramp at the bottom. Let's move the position values so we can see what happens at the corners. So I think we can just scale the whole spline as an object on the horizontal axis. So that looks fine now. Let's continue by creating the first part of the animation. So make sure you're on frame 0 and also have the position value of this tag set to 0%. And we're going to click the small button so it goes red. Now let's go to something like frame 50 and go to 100% value and create a second keyframe. And let's also increase the length of this animation to something like 150 frames. And this way we can go to frame 100 and have this go back to a 0% in position and keyframe again. And finally I'm going to add one more motion back to 100% at frame 150. So this way if we play this we have this rocking motion going back and forth, but you can notice it is not looping smoothly. And that is because I have a different technique in mind, where we will not have the animation go from the exact start at frame 0 to 150, but we still want the same motion as if it would go to a frame 150 for example. So for example let's start at frame 25 in this case, so we are going to crop the timeline. And let's take a look where the skateboard is at this position. So right now you can see this exactly at the middle I think. So what I do to line this up with the end part is looking at the side view. And just line up the edge of the skateboard to the side of the screen. And then I would go to the back portion of the timeline and then just scrub through it until I find a frame that is exactly the same. So we would crop this at 125 frames in this case. So that way if you would play it, it is a perfect loop again. Right now this isn't very useful just yet, but let's just continue with adjusting the speed of this animation. So go to window and F curves. So in here we have this first animation. Also notice you can move around in this window like you would in the viewport. So that is a bit equal on every side. We want a bit more dynamic animation. So the first adjustment I'm going to make is at this top point. When you grab one of these handles and move it around, it will copy itself to the other side. So what you want to do is holding shift so you can move just one side. We're going to make it a bit shorter at the left side and a bit longer at the right side. That way we have a bit more velocity to this. 
Now at the bottom here we are going to do a similar thing but in the opposite direction. At this point it is just a matter of fine tuning so you need to play the animation a lot of times so you can see what is going on. Maybe we can also increase the curve at the first keyframe and also at the last keyframe. Okay, I'm just going to stick with this. It isn't perfect, but uh, I'm not going to waste any more time in this tutorial. But for you, you should make sure the animation of this is exactly like you want it to. Because now we are going to crop the timeline. And if you make any more adjustments to the first and last keyframe on this animation, it will start moving around and your timing will not be perfect anymore. So let's go to the first frame. So frame 25 in this case. And line up this side view with the edge of the skateboard. And now I am going to the end of the animation and find a matching frame. In this case it isn't lining up exactly like we wanted to. So maybe let's try 117 in my case. And let's play this so we can see if it loops. But you can see there is a small glitch so we need to adjust this with just one frame. In this case this will be frame 116. Okay, I hope you found the frame that lines up for you. It will probably be a different number. But let's continue with the other animations. So what I would like to do now is having the skateboard turn around when it is in the air. So the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is making some nulls inside of this skateboard null. That way we can just animate every null for every direction instead of having a mix of many different animations on just one object. Because that will get very complicated. So let's go in your skateboard now and group all of the contents together inside a new null and we're going to name this so it is a bit more clean. So for this one we're just going to use this for the rotation. Now let's add another null inside of this with the same contents again where I want to have it make a kickflip or something. And I'm also going to create yet another null inside of this for a last animation which will be for the direction. So let's name these appropriately. So now this is set up. We can start making some keyframes. So for the rotation one, we are going to search for that frame where it should start rotating. So that is just when it gets in the air. Let's set the keyframe. And add a second one when it is landing. And we are going to rotate this 180 degrees of course. So that looks alright. Let's go to the other side and do the same thing. Let's play this animation. And you can see I did it the wrong way because now it is slipping. You need to make sure the rotation isn't countering itself. So let's delete the keyframes at the beginning and just make sure you make a duplicate keyframe of the one closest to the beginning. And now we can make a rotation again to the correct direction and hopefully this lines up this time. Okay, so that is some very basic stuff. But it still isn't very realistic because it is rotating on the same point in the air and that is not exactly how you do it when you're skateboarding. So what we would like to have is that the skateboard is going a bit to the side while rotating. So the easiest way to do this is actually animating the spline instead of the skateboard. So select the spline and we're going to set the first keyframe again just when the skateboard is leaving the ramp and we're going to add a second one when it is landing but make sure the spline is moving a bit to the side and we're going to do the same thing at the other side. Just make sure you duplicate the keyframes instead of making manual ones because otherwise it will not loop. Of course you should also make some small adjustments to make it line up correctly and make it look more convincing. Okay next up let's go and animate the flip animation. So this is an easy one. I'm just going for one flip at one side. So let's search where it is leaving the ramp again and just create a keyframe at the original state and then a second one where it rotated 360 degrees and keyframe again. So that looks pretty nice. You could also make this a bit more refined by going to the F curves again, but I'm just going to skip that for this tutorial. Now the last thing I want to do is having the skateboard turn just a bit when it is starting to leave the ramp. So it is steering in the direction it will fly. So that is the last null we created in this skateboard group. It is just the same process again, where we go to the point where the skateboard is leaving the ramp and we're going to create a first keyframe 
where it is just going straight. Then just a few frames later we're going to create a second keyframe where the skateboard is rotating something like 10 degrees. And then let's find the frame where it will land back again. And we will have to compensate by rotating this back 20 degrees again. Then just a few frames later we're going to create a second keyframe where the skateboard is just going straight. And let's also do the same thing at the other side. So that is all there is to the animation. Of course you should make more adjustments to the F-curves to make it a bit smoother and more realistic. But let's take one last look in the side view so it isn't clipping. And in this case mine looks just fine. But it may be for you that the wheels are clipping in the ramp at the corners here. So in that case you should go in the point mode with the spline selected. And that way you have these handles to adjust the spline a bit more so you can make it line up. Okay, so that is it for the animation. I'm just going to continue by adding some more details to this. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a camera object so I know what kind of composition I will have and I don't need to make too much surroundings for this scene. So for the camera I want something like a parallel camera to have this kind of isometric look. I'm also going to scale up this plane. And let's also add a second one to the side like we had it on the example. Also I had this small ramp at the side. This is just a cube which we make editable. So we can select this top polygon and scale it down. And if you have this weird shading, you can also remove this font tag so it isn't as smooth anymore. And what I also did is using the loop cut tool at the top part and the bottom part. So I get two rings of polygons which I can select and apply a different material on. You can also duplicate the skateboard and remove this line to spline tag so we get rid of the animation. And also make sure you select these three nulls inside of it and just delete all the keyframes on that as well. And I also had this rail at the other side. This is just a rectangle with the rounding option selected. And a circle object which we can both put inside of a sweep object and that way we have a rail. I also placed the skateboard at the rail, it is just a duplicate. Also make sure you still apply the colors to your objects. Now let's take a look at the lighting for this. First of all I went in the render settings and added a ambient occlusion effect to this. The second thing I did is adding a physical sky and just pick a time you like. But I went for 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's render so we can see where the shadows go. In this case they are coming towards the right but I want them to go to the left. So let's rotate the sky 180 degrees. Now it is still a bit dark so what I did is adding a light object and going to the bottom of the options and checking the ambient illumination option and decreasing the intensity to something like 70% otherwise it is a bit too bright. Also a small detail is changing the color to something a bit more blue so it looks like a color that comes from the sky. Now a last thing on the lighting part I did to give it a bit more vibrant colors, uh, give it a bit more life, is adding an area light and position it somewhere to the right so the shadows will go towards the left again. I also scale it up a bit so the shadows will be softer. But of course to get that we need to enable the shadows at the bottom here. And as a last thing I also changed the color to a bit more of an orange tone. So by adding that you can see the colors are just a bit more vibrant. Okay so a few last things I added to the scene where these small cups scattered around the floor. So that is just a cylinder object where we make it editable and just have some extrusions at the top polygons. Of course you can use any colors you like on this. Now the last thing I added to the scene was this kind of low poly grass. So I started off with a polygon object again and I just made some extrusions on these edges to have a very simple pointy shape and I placed this inside of a cloner object with the mode set to grid array. I set the count to 7 on every axis except the y axis because we don't want them to be floating in the air. And of course we need to scale down the polygons so it isn't intersecting with each other. And we need to resize the cloner as well so it covers a larger area. Now another thing I did is adding yet another cloner inside of the original cloner and we have the polygon inside of that one actually. 
and we're going to change the mode to radial for this one. You should make sure the plane direction is on the XZ value. Even though this looks nice this way, I still want the polygons to point up. So we would try to do that by selecting the polygon and rotating it, but that doesn't work. We need to go to the cloner which has the polygon inside of it and go to the transform tab. And in here we can rotate this. Now let's make sure the cloner is still selected and go to MoGraph effector and create a random effector. So we can change the position a bit on these, but not on the Y value. Let's also do the same thing on the rotation, so it has a bit more randomness on it. And we're going to do the same thing with the top cloner, which holds these radial clones. One last thing I did is duplicating that bottom cloner, so we can have a bit more variation. And let's just increase the count to something like 8, for example, so there is a difference. And then after applying the color, we can even copy the cloner to the other side, so every part of the floor is being covered with grass. And let's make one last render to see how this looks. And this gets pretty close to the original example. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as I said in the beginning of the video, you can download these files on the Patreon page. And also, if you want to share what you've made yourself, you can find us on Twitter or Instagram. I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next video.